Well, I warned you recently that it was all swords all the time on Tested, and right now I'm still in my sword phase. <laughs> I'm still going through. <laughs> well, your child's going through what we call the sword phase. Uh, I have I have built this beautiful... This, I'm very happy. I'm calling it a beautiful sword. I have built this beautiful sword. I'm super proud of it. Uh, the blade was a purchase. There's a link to the seller in the description. Uh, it was sold to me as a rough forged blade, differentially heated. It's a great piece of steel. I did all the grinding to bring it in. The reason it looks really aged is because I then rusted it for about a week under... Uh, well, like two days in acid, and then I cleaned that off. Uh, and then I designed and built all the furniture for it, which I know looks it's absolutely inspired by all the swords Peter Lyon, my teacher and friend, has built for Lord of the Rings. Uh, brass cross guard, a uh, wooden and brass grip, and a heavy pommel. Its center of gravity is, I'm going on on the sword. It's, I'm so happy with the sword. Um, and I've been carrying it back and forth every day uh, so I can stare at it at night. And it's just like, you know, riding the one wheel while holding a sword, it just seems like poor safety practice. So uh, it's time to make a scabbard. It's time to make a scabbard for this thing. And I have, uh, per my old scabbard I built for uh, Boromir's sword a few years ago, I still have some poplar, which I have, I just came in this morning and off camera, I cut it to size and then traced the sword shape on it. And we are going to make a scabbard right now. Uh, it has, the blade has a distal taper uh, from here to here. Uh, it goes from a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch. So it loses only about 125 thousandths from the base to the tip. Uh, and it also has a taper like that. Uh, it, while it's a leaf blade and it gets narrower here and even narrower here, I'm actually gonna have the scabbard for obvious reasons go straight back from here because otherwise I won't be able to get the sword in there. Um, I don't need this near, well, I will need this nearby for test fitting once I start to, yeah. So I'm gonna clean off my bench and we're gonna make some scabbard pieces. Ooh, I also have an outside of this scabbard. I was looking at scabbard pictures this morning. Scabbard, scabbard, scabbard. I was looking at scabbard pictures this morning and uh, I came across an outside look that I liked for the scabbards and that's what I'm gonna follow, but I'm not gonna tell you about it just yet. Not until I get this all together. All right, let's clean up. Excellent. I played Grace Cathedral Hill by the Decemberists. Stop. Oh, that is a good shot. Okay. All right. Let us start the process of scabbard making. Uh, my first step is I'm going to take this chisel and I am going to uh, God, there's part of me that really wants to mill this out, but you know what? I'm just going to keep on going. I can't play it while we're running this video, but while I'm doing this, I'm listening to the song Brandy. Famous, wonderful song Brandy. Uh, it is the plot centerpiece of the second Guardians of the Galaxy film. Terrific song, I grew up with it, came out when I was a kid. And I wanted to tell you a story about the song Brandy. Um, in 2001 or so, I was working on AI. Uh, at ILM, Industrial Light and Magic, over there on Kerner Boulevard. And I was working with this dude who came over to me one day. And while we were working in the shop, this song was on the radio. And I'm working at my table, and this dude's working over at his table, and he comes over to me. I literally can't remember this guy's name. He only worked on this one job with us uh, for just like a couple months. But anyway, he comes over to me, and he goes, Hey, Adam, you know this song, Brandy? 
I said, yeah, Brandy, you're a fun girl. I know it well. And he goes, you know what it's about? And I'm like, I'm thinking it's like, you're so vain by Carly Simon and supposedly about Mick Jagger or maybe it's about Warren Beatty. Who knows who it could be about? So I thought I was getting that kind of, you know, truth telling. And I said, no, what is the song Brandy really about? And he said, oh, it's about this waitress in a seaside town. And like the fishermen who go there, they, they really like her, but they, none of them can marry her because they're kind of married to the sea. And I was like, yeah, I, I got that from listening to the song for the better part of the last 30 some odd years. And he goes, yeah, I know. I just only listened to the lyrics for the first time. The weirdest interaction I have ever had around the song Brandy. You're welcome. This is tiring work, I will tell you. Holding a chisel correctly while you're doing this, non-trivial operation. There's a lot of variance and I'm terrified of digging too deep, raising the back angle of the chisel up too high. At the same time, I wanna take out a certain amount of meat and like learning the difference between those two things, really tricky. It takes a lot of patience. I was sitting here running through different tools I could use to do this, and I was picturing some non-existent, I was picturing that I had some non-existent Japanese teacher of joinery who was watching me move through these tools and just being like. So this is the kind of monologue I have going on in my head, like that Japanese woodworker in my head, the stand-in for my subconscious here is being like, I'm really disappointed in you, Adam. You really you need to have more patience. You need to go more slowly. The reason your hand hurts is because you're ripping too hard. I know, I know those things. Just a lot of repetitive, tedious, glorious holy work. All right, I have room to move. All right. I know I'm going too fast. I it's almost like I can't not, frankly. I'm already, I can tell, I'm in the wrong state of mind for doing this. I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna come in tomorrow, finish this and glue these together. I'm happy with how it's going, but I'm way out of energy and I really want it to go right. And I can tell I'm about to make a mistake that will like, yeah, I can tell I'm, I'm close to mistake land. So let's move away from mistake land and call it. See you tomorrow. Well, there's been a couple of one day builds in the interim, but I'm back on the scabbard again. And um, the scab scabbards are really interesting. Um, I'm always a little daunted by them at first, and then they always turn out to be a little less effort than I was afraid they would be. So what I did was I drew the outline of the sword on this poplar, poplar. It's all about poplar. Um, and then I used a chisel and outlined with the flat side out, I outlined that about an eighth of an inch down. And then I chiseled down a little ledge right there. And now I'm going in with the violin plane and I am, uh, I am bowling. I am creating the bowl that will handle the, um, the sort of diamond cross section of the blade. Uh, that's the bowl.
What's what I really like about going through this process this is about my fifth or sixth or even seventh scabbard. Maybe my tenth. Who knows? But this is like I've made the better part of a dozen scabbards so far. Uh, and I can see that as one improves in the making of swords, one gets a better intuition for the shapes of the scabbards and exactly how to do the the hogging out required. This one feels like we're far along. Uh, let's, uh, Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that looks like it's gonna fit. And yeah. Okay, so let's get this shape correct here. Yeah, yeah okay, cool. Sorry, I think I was saying something before where I could see, I was saying I've made a few scabbards and I think if there's something that I've learned while making them, it's that I'm starting to get a better intuition for how a sword fits in here. Uh, and that's just like, yeah, that's just that kind of, you know, wonderful institutional knowledge that comes when you build weird shit. Uh, I just love that. I think I want to try clamping these two halves together and see if I can't get a sword in between them. I think that's really the kind of thing to try here. Ooh, I bump, did I really bump you into the, yeah, I'm gonna to need to resharpen. Okay. Oh, God, I love these little violin planes. They are so awesome. Okay, let's try this. cut out a strip of lamb's wool because we're gonna we're gonna give this thing a little bit of a liner in lamb's wool uh, in order to uh, have some rust inhibiting properties I believe Wait a minute. You are synthetic. I thought you were real. Yeah, well, I can see some looming going on here. Uh, let me go back and see what I have. I knew I had some actual lamb skin or sheep skin. That and I got. I know I should have known IKEA. I should have known IKEAs weren't real. Uh, all right, so we're gonna do. Uh, we're just gonna do the first little bit here. Now we're gonna shave. Now this is the way Rick Lyon taught me to carve all fur from the back with a sharp blade 
just breaking the surface. And in this way, you're not slicing through all the little hairy hairs. Yep. <laughs> this is going to be so freaking satisfying. I can't even tell. Yeah, I'm gonna knit some socks out of this wool. I am not knitting socks out of this wool. There we go. Oh, so great. I do that there. That goes like that. And this goes. Great, I like it. All right, I'm gonna use some of Tight Bond's hide glue here, which I have uh, ordered some of. I'm trying out a new glue. I don't know hide glues very well, but Ted Woodford loves them for fixing guitars. And I think myself, I think to myself, I can't sing that. Uh, so anyway, I, I was good. I'm attaching this bit of um, sheep's wool to uh, the wood. So this is a suede and a wood. And I, I don't want to use barge glue because I don't want the, uh, the, 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 I don't want those chemicals near my blade. You know what I mean? It's a good blade. I don't want my chemicals near them. No. Uh, so, hide glue is what I'm trying. Uh, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna clean this up with some sandpaper. I have some hide glue in there. Ooh, this stuff is thick. I'm going to use CA glue to put this together. Okay. Yeah, I think we're ready. I have the rudiments of a scabbard. I'm gonna 
let it set for a few minutes and then uh, I'll clean up here and we'll try it out. So right now, uh, I'm very happy with how this has gone. I've got a really nice envelope. Uh, I am going to be, it's a little bit of a grab at the end, which I like, I want a little bit. There's a little bit of flex to the wood. Uh, one side is a little thicker than the other. So I'm gonna plane a little more on this side. Uh, but first, but soft. Um, but first we're gonna cut this out according to the line here that I have drawn that, that uh, follows the blade with about, I don't know, 150,000 as a border. It's a nice positive grab. I can make some hardware, some furniture for that. That's really good. Oh, very happy. Okay, so now I want to mark this. I want to mark this with center lines. And, and then I'm going to plane. We're going to clean this up on my belt sander now. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm very happy. I've got a nice, I've got a nice line. I know it's a little wavy. I don't mind that. I got a nice line. I know what's the outside and what's the inside. When I put this on, and there it is. Ooh, we got a little split there, don't we? Yeah, all right. That's that's why we're gonna have to make some brass hardware for this. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Wow, this is great. I'm gonna. Uh, I've got a piece of leather here. I'm gonna barge glue the middle of it and glue it to that, which is the outside. Yep. And then I'm gonna wrap it around, and I'm gonna finish it with a strip that is slightly undersized. That's how this is going to all go. So first up, we're going to crack this open. Is this the shot? Is it really the shot? I don't think it's the shot. There we go. Yeah, oh, more like a cooking show. to join these two partners in holy matrimony. If there's any reason you can think of that that shouldn't happen, speed now. Ow! 
Outstanding. Very happy. All right. Oh, right. I forgot the second. The wood card. Right. Okay. Oh, I love this look. That I'm really happy with. That came out just how I wanted to. Um, I'm going to make a panel to glue onto here. Um, but first, I need to sand this down so I don't get any bumps. Diving isn't great, but uh, it's just totally sufficient. Let's see here. You can never pull a sword out of your back card. Uh, Let's do some brass work, shall we? using a nibbler here. This is a really fun tool. I'm making a slot that the sword will go through at the end of the um, 
brass that sits at the entrance to the scabbard. And uh, this is a tool for making square holes. It's, uh, you could always get them at Radio Shack back in the day. These were, uh, these were a Radio Shack special for making square holes when you were making like project boxes and things like that. Oh, Radio Shack. That's nice. I'm happy about that. Great. Let's uh, finesse that a little bit. All right, I'm following the outline. The back is the back. Okay, let's get some flux on there. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna drop some solder down in there. 
This is the new thing I'm noticing. I'm learning how to put solder in and heat it up so it does its business. All right, we got some flux. Let us not run out in the middle, shall we? What do I think I am, Tom Cruise from Bartender? What do you call it? Cocktail? to get that? I did! Wow! I don't mind saying I'm impressed with myself right now. I'm just getting better at the soldering. It's getting more consistent. I'm screwing up less, getting good results more. Yeah, I may have to crack that open just a little bit. That's fine. So there we go. That is the top of the, it's not the final shape of the top of the scabbard, but it is the top of the scabbard. Here, why don't you watch me? My hands instead of my face. Watch my hands. <laughs> I don't know what I'm referring to. Trim that back. Let's uh, let's make that pretty, shall we? Um, so, okay, there we go. That, yeah, not the most beautiful one that anyone's ever built. That's for sure, but it's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, so now the question is, what is the shape? Oh, what is the shape? What is the shape? Oh, and by the way, it fits. Oh, yeah, that is a nice fit. Doesn't rattle around or anything. So, question is, What is the shape? So the shape is, is it? Now we're going to cut that shape out. Is that really the shape we're going to cut out? Hang on. Hmm. 
I don't know if that's the shape. So, this is fun. How do you cut out the red, the red lines here? Well, I'm about to try. I'm about to do it. Here's where it goes. Oh. This, oh yeah, this is totally appropriate. This is called the nibbler. It's a notcher. This is another nibbler. Watch this one go. Watch this one go. So, oh, sorry. So, that's what it does. It makes little tiny moons of brass. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, jeez, slow down, everybody, will you? Oh, see that? Just, just carves it right up. Ladies and germs, yes, okay. I'm gonna finish this on the belt sander. feeling like something, like a thing, like a thing. I'm happy. Yeah, I know I gotta do that part. How are we gonna do that? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do with that? What are we gonna do? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure I'm gonna take this home and stare at it tonight. I remain pleased. There's no way I'm cleaning up tonight. It's almost six o'clock, time to go. 